carry out all safety checks before bringing the patient into the scanner room. Help the patient to lie supine on the scanner table with the affected knee in the dedicated knee coil. The apex of the patella should be about a centimetre below the centre of the coil. Assemble the coil and place the pads to help the patient keep still. Provide the patient with an emergency buzzer. Provide ear protection to reduce scanner noise according to your manufacturer's guidelines. Headphones will also enable communication with the patient during the scan. Move the table and centre the laser beam localiser over the lower border of the patella. Move the patient into the scanner, making sure they're calm and comfortable before you leave the room. Once you're back in the control room, select the correct patient details in the browser or you can type them in manually if necessary. It's very important to get the details right including the correct patient weight so that the SAR can be calculated accurately. Register the patient as lying feet first and supine. Choose the appropriate knee protocol according to your hospital and radiologist guidelines. Begin the scan with an axial localizer sequence. From the axial localizer, you can plan the sagittal and coronal localizer parallel and perpendicular to the medial and lateral condyles. In this protocol, the first diagnostic sequence is a proton density, or PD, fat saturated axial. On the sagittal localizer, angle the positioning box perpendicular to the line through the long axis of the femur and tibia. Make sure the block covers the area from above the patella to the tibial tuberosity. On the coronal view, angle the slices parallel to the tibial plateau. Using saturation bands above and below the axial block will further reduce arterial pulsation artefacts. Now center the axial localizer in the field of view the phase direction in the axial scans should be right to left. This is to avoid pulsation artefacts from the popliteal artery. Next, plan your PD fat saturated coronal sequence on the newly acquired axial image. Slices should cover the knee joint from the patella anteriorly to the popliteal artery posteriorly. Slices should run parallel to the posterior border of the femoral condyles. On the sagittal view, the slices should be planned parallel to the midline of the femur and tibia. Again, use saturation bands above and below to reduce pulsation artefacts. Check your planning. And apply. Now, plan your sagittal views. In this protocol, the first sagittal is a STIR sequence. STIR is designed to suppress the signal from fat. On the axial plane, plan the slices parallel to the lateral condyle of the femur. In most cases, this will also be parallel to the ACL or anterior cruciate ligament. Make sure coverage is sufficient to cover from the lateral to the medial condyle. On the coronal view, align the slices parallel to the midline of the femur and tibia. Now center the sagittal localizer in the field of view and apply. For the subsequent sagittal sequences, the slice numbers and planning can be copied from the previous sagittal sequence. In this protocol, we have a T1 and T2 star sequence.
Once planning is completed, you should start reviewing your images. This is a PD fat saturated axial image where fluids appear bright and fat appears dark. Most infections and edema in the knee appear bright in this sequence. PD fat sat sequences are very useful for visualizing cartilage, ligaments and bony edema. This is a PD fat saturated coronal image. You can clearly see the meniscal cartilages as well as the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. The coronal view allows excellent visualization of meniscal tears. Lastly, review the sagittal images. All sagittal sequences allow the visualization of the menisci, the ACL and the PCL, along with tears and insufficiencies. This is a stir sagittal image where fluids appear bright and fat appears dark. Stir sagittals are useful for highlighting infection and bony edema. This is a T1 sagittal image where fluids appear dark and fat appears bright. T1 sagittal is useful in the diagnosis of cystic and blood components, which, if present, in blood would appear bright on T1 scans. This is a T2 star or T2 gradient echo sagittal. In this sequence, fluids appear bright and muscles appear grey. T2 star sagittal is again very useful for visualising the menisci and for assessing the ACL and the PCL.